Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane again. Our lesson for today is all about the solutions to learning task number 2 of Mathematics Module, page 10. Graphs of polynomial functions. The examples that I'm going to use were lifted from the Mathematics 10, quarter 2 module, pages 10 to 11. Now let's start with the instruction in learning task 2 is you have to write in your answer sheet the following. Describe the properties of the graph of the given polynomial function f of x equals x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 2x squared and f of x is equal to x minus 1 squared multiplied to x plus 1. You have to provide the following. Letter A, standard form, B, leading term, C, x-intercepts, D, y-intercepts, E, number of turning points, F, possible graphs, and the end behaviors. To help you answer A to F, please watch my previous video, Polynomial Functions and Their Graphs. It's going to help you in understanding on how to answer a to F. Now let us now proceed with the first one, letter A. Let us now describe the first given polynomial function f of x is equal to x raised to the fourth power minus x cubed minus 2x squared. What will be its standard form in letter A? Since in my previous video, I have already discussed that the standard form of any polynomial function is a function that is arranged from the highest degree to the lowest degree. Now, if you notice, our given polynomial is already in its standard form. So, you are just going to copy the given polynomial. So, f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 2x squared. Now, what is the leading term? Now, the leading term is simply the first term of the standard form polynomial function. So, our leading term is x to the fourth. What about the number of turning points? The number of turning points is given by n minus 1. n means the degree of the polynomial function. Since the degree of the polynomial function is 4, so we are going to solve 4 minus 1. So the number of turning points that we have is 3. I'll just write there 3 turning points. Now remember the turning points are those points in either the maximum or low or the lowest point okay, of the polynomial function. Now possible graph with n behaviors, I would suggest that you have to watch the previous video on polynomial functions and their graphs for you to recall okay the end behaviors of a given polynomial when it's odd and when it's even. Okay, I even gave there a table for you to follow as a guide. Now, let us now determine the possible graph and its end behavior. First is we look at the leading term. Since the leading term has a sign of positive and the degree is even, so, I write there positive and even. Okay, E stands for even. It means that it's going to start with high value and it's going to end at a high value as well. So, that will be the end behaviors or the graph. So, tentatively, if you are to graph this, okay, its graph will start at a high. Okay. Then one turning point here, the second turning point, third turning point, and it has to end 
here. So this will be our possible graph. Now these are the turning points, the first, the second, and the third. And this will be our end behaviors, high, and ends at high as well. So my next, ex my next example will be, how do you solve now for the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts? Let me explain first what an x-intercept is. So if I'm going to draw a graph, the y-axis and the x-axis, and then the graph, okay, a parabola that's concave downward, this is actually, these are actually the x-intercepts, first one and the second one. So an x-intercept are actually the set of points that touches the x-axis. So those are the x-intercepts. Another name for x-intercept is what we call as the roots. And another name for the roots are what we call as the zeros of the function. So we write there zero or the zeros or they are the roots. Now they're called zeros of the function because for a reason that the y values there are actually zero. So example, the coordinate of this point is negative one comma zero and the coordinate of this point is at 1, comma, 0. Notice that the y values here okay, are all zeros. That's why it's called zeros of the function. Now, how do we solve the x-intercepts? There are actually two ways. First is you graph, but that's going to take a while. Okay? It's lengthy. The process is too meticulous. Next is to calculate. Now, since we are given a fourth degree equation, a fourth degree polynomial function in letter A, it means we will use synthetic division to find its factors. Uh, remember, in my previous video, its factored form are actually the zeros of the polynomial function. So, we are going to factor letter A by using synthetic division. So we are solving for letter A using synthetic. So we have to remember that when we are using synthetic division, our polynomial function should be complete and arranged in the standard form. So x to the fourth has 1, negative x cubed is negative 1, negative 2x squared is negative 2, then we should have x raised to the first power, 0, and the constant, 0. Since there's no x to the first and no constant, it means we have to write 0. Okay, and then we will do now trial and error. Since the second term, second coefficient rather, is negative 1, I would try negative 1. Okay, so bring down 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 to negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. So therefore, I already have the first factor since the remainder is now 0. So I have to bring down these zeros. So this is already our first root. So our first root or first zero, let's call it R1, is negative 1. So this is our remainder, the constant, x, x squared, and x cubed. Okay. Since if you notice, our polynomial function is still in the third degree, we are going to continue with our synthetic, okay, or commonly known as a depressed synthetic division, meaning we keep on lowering the degree of the polynomial. 
So, we are going to list again. 1, negative 2, 0, 0. Okay, remember that our synthetic division has to end with a constant. And the last digit here is 0. The last 0 is actually the remainder. So, it's not part of the polynomial. Then, I'm going to try negative 2. Since the second coefficient is negative 2, I'm going to try negative 2. Okay, bring down 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Okay, obviously, negative 2 is not the correct one. So, I'm going to erase negative 2 and try to use positive 2. Bring down 1. Then, positive 2. Okay, I already have 0, so this will all become 0. Our remainder, constant, our x to the first, and x squared. Now, we still have x squared at the bottom part, which we know is no longer possible to be depressed okay, in synthetic but we can solve already for the value of x so we have now our root number 2 which is 2 ok so we have negative 1 positive 2 as our first two roots or the zeros of the function or the x intercepts now we are now going to solve for the third root we have a remaining uh, remaining polynomial x squared, we simply equate this to 0, then extract the square root of x squared to get x. x is equal to 0. So, this is now our third root, or R3, 0. So, for the A, we have 3 x intercepts, or we have 3 zeros or 3 roots. So we, I'm going to write here. They okay, are x intercepts are the following. So we are able to get three roots, you have negative one, zero, and then we have two. So those are our x-intercept. Now let's try to answer now letter B. Letter B f of x is equal to quantity x minus 1 raised to the second power multiplied to x plus 1. This one is easier to calculate since it's already in its factored form. So which means there's no need to do synthetic division, but we can already solve for the zeros of this function by equating its factored form to 0. So for example, letter B x minus 1 okay, raised to the second power when expanded will have x minus 1 multiplied to x minus 1 then multiplied to x plus 1 okay, then we simply equate all of this to 0 Therefore, it's obvious that we are going to get three roots of this equation. So, x minus 1, the first one, is equal to 0. The value is x equals 1. So, this is now our R1. Positive 1. Then, the second factor, which is the same, x minus 1 is equal to 0. So, same root, 
x is 1. So, our second root, or R2, is also 1. Then, the last factored form is x plus 1 equals 0. So, we have x is equal to negative 1. So, that's our third root, negative 1. So, therefore, the x-intercepts, or letter B, okay, how do we write the final answer? We have negative 1, and then we have 1, multiplicity of 2. If you remember this term that we write, multiplicity of 2, meaning 1, okay, will appear twice in the zeros of our function. Now, let's move on now to what is a y-intercept. Now, a y-intercept, if I'm going to draw this graph, is actually the point that touches the y-axis. So, that point, will be this point. And that point has a coordinate of 0, 1. Notice that the y-intercept, the value of x, is always 0. So this one is easier to calculate. How? We simply have to solve for f of 0. So example, in letter A, we are going to solve for f of 0. Okay. So, therefore, all the x variables in letter A will be substituted with 0. 0 raised to the 4th power minus 0 to the 3rd minus 2 times 0 raised to the 2nd power which when evaluated will be 0. So, this is our y-intercept for letter A. Now, let's solve now letter B. Now, in letter B, same thing, let's solve for f of 0. Okay. So, there's no need to expand x minus 1 raised to the second power, but rather, you just substitute for the values of x as 0. So, you have 0 minus 1 raised to the second power plus, or rather, sorry, quantity 0 plus 1. Okay, this will become 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Then, you raise it to the second power will become positive 1. Then, 0 plus 1 is 1. So, 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So, this is our y-intercept for letter B. So, that's how easy it is to solve the y-intercept. Okay? Simply solve for f of 0 and you are going to get the value of 2y-intercept. There's no other name for y-intercept. Okay, maybe you're asking how come the x-intercept has so many other names, but the y-intercept, we only call it the y-intercept. So, I hope that I was able to help you understand and solve learning task 2 of your mathematics module. Okay, my next video will be about learning task 3, and I hope you watch my next video. Okay, bye-bye!